Oh yeah. Welcome back to Captain Cole Saw Outdoors with yours truly. Just a man nature together. And it is July 18th. I got the 17 HMR and the camera on my back because we're going out to pursue what I consider to be many of you guys, my viewers, favorite videos to see on the channel, which is a good old fashioned groundhog hunt in Western Pennsylvania. Now, normally I'd be hunting in areas that are a lot more open. There's a little bit more of a mosaic of habitats between woodlands and hay fields and ag fields. But this has been a very atypical summer. It's very, very hot. And the heat index is off the charts. Uh, there's hardwood trees like yellow poplar shedding their leaves in ways that they don't normally do in July uh, in order to protect themselves from drought. The leaves actually can expel water. And in a time of low water fall, uh, we haven't had much rainfall at all in the last month, month and a half. The trees lose their leaves is kind of a protective instinct with all this heat i mean we're talking like a hundred degree heat index every other day it's crazy that pop out here into the open sometimes you just got to be a little tactically different when it comes to getting groundhogs uh, and today we're going to expel a completely different set of tactics in order to do so which is use water sources creek bottoms specifically to find dry weather groundhogs Every living thing, ecologically speaking, needs water to survive. In a time of drought, this is just a really great opportunity to exploit an animal's need for water in order to find them. All the traditional spots where I normally find groundhogs uh, are not really showing much sign at all. But with trail cam images that I've been collecting as I do every year, mainly for deer, I'm seeing animals all over the creek systems that I don't normally see in such a high density. Everything from geese to foxes, animals with their offspring, deer, raccoons, you name it. Everything needs water. Groundhogs are no different. So what we're gonna do to hunt these groundhogs today is we're still using the 17 HMR. So we're still using a real low caliber rimfire rifle to get after them. But in addition to that, we are going to move down along creek bottoms and river bottoms that we know are going to harbor these groundhogs as well as other wildlife uh, for us to harvest. Now, we gotta be smart about what we do though. So when you're down on a river or when you're down on a creek bottom, every animal under the sun is gonna be living in that bottom during a drought period like we're experiencing here in Pennsylvania. And what that means is that we have to move very cautiously, very smoothly, and very deliberately as we keep an eye out ahead for groundhogs, as we look for them down along the creeks. And this might be out in some open pastures and open hay fields that we see close to the water, but it could very well be back in the timber as well. So I got the camera here and we're gonna head down into this bottom that's in front of me here. It's quite a walk down. And if our trail cameras are giving us any hints that we can use for our own advantage. It's that these groundhogs that we're hunting today, it's gonna to be a little bit more close quarter shooting than it is that long range sniping that sometimes groundhog hunting gets a reputation for being exclusively. Well, if you wanna kill groundhogs from year to year, you gotta be smart. Groundhog hunting in this close quarters matter is not what I would call a traditional kind of groundhog hunting, but Knowing that these hogs are going to be down along this water drainage, we move slow and we use the high plant cover to get close to a hay pasture where we know the groundhogs frequent. Now we don't know exactly where the groundhogs may or may not pop out in this hay field, but we just move close to the edge, occasionally spotting the edge for movement as groundhogs should be feeding within 10 feet of the brush line in case you have to retreat from cover. It just goes to show that if you move slow and move quick, you might just walk up on your quarry sooner than you would give yourself credit. My feet are very wet. Right here. 
they don't make a much more point blank than that. That's 15 yards away. We used the creek bottom to get right up on that thing. Uh, there's just a lot of iron weed and going rod in the way, but we got them. We did what we set out to do. Man, that was a, I think it's a big one. It's hard to tell, but the hay is just high enough to hide his body. But his strength was also his weakness because we got height advantage coming out of this weed and he walked right to us. Shortest groundhog shot I think I've ever had on camera. Oh yeah, he's dead. Wow. 19 paces away. Well, that's what a successful groundhog stock looks like. It's a big one. Healthy ones, female, but Hopefully we can get another one doing the same thing. So this creek bends around and extends up into another hollow behind us. So that's one whistle pig down. Let's see if we can't get another one. All right, y'all, we're back. It's two days after we shot that groundhog down on the creek and Unlike the last time we were out here, when it was only about 2 p.m., a little bit midday, kind of not ideal groundhogging conditions, it's about 9.30 right now, and it's way cooler. Uh, and we actually got some decent rain, which is nice. Now, we only got a day of it, and it was only about two hours of rain. But the reason why this is going to be a more ideal groundhog situation is because the crops that are in that little pasture like where we shot the one the other day that hay is just a little bit more rich thicker than it was uh, so they should be out feeding in the cooler hours of the morning on fresh shrubs uh, fresh browse rather so this would be a really good opportunity for us to go in there and maybe pop another groundhog or two compared to that one who was hanging out pretty close to his hole and we just kind of lucked into the other day. But we're going to do the same thing. The creek is right up ahead here. We're going to cross it. And then we're going to go in and see if we can't wreck another groundhog or two with this close range guerrilla warfare type hunting, as I like to refer to it. place you would think that this would be a foolproof attack on this groundhog but not so much with the thick cover of the river bottom i fail to realize that there was not just one but four different groundhogs within a 40 yard span of this specimen which poses a problem there's more eyes watching for trouble in a shorter range which means i'm gonna have to be more careful if i want to crack a shot at any of these animals because if one blows my cover, it could all go downhill for the hunt. But that's what we're looking for right there. That's our burrow. So they're using this creek, absolutely. It's just a matter of getting into them. I have to know they're here.
that was intense. Wow. More intense than it had to be. There were two groundhogs there. I hope to God the big camera is still running. But they were both coming out of that hole. And one got just a little too far. I closed the gap to about 25 yards. Hit him a little back. He rolled. He didn't go straight down, but he did not get back to his hole, uh, which we're going to drive in here and uh, see if we can find the guy and uh, call it a successful hunt. <laughs> Whew, that was pretty intense. I hope to goodness that big camera got all that. Oh, this is where we shot him. This is where he came out. You can see a little bit of a trail, a little game trail there. And looks like he might have went right in here. There he is. Nice. Big round dog. Holy cow. Well, all. Another successful groundhog hunt here for you on the channel. We didn't make a huge pile, but we had to get in a way tighter situation in order to harvest these animals. And with this heat, like I said, it looked like it was going to rain, but man, the humidity is way freaking up. You can still find good hunting opportunities, but water is animal's best friend. It's all life's best friend. You need it. Uh, it doesn't matter what if you're a plant or an animal or anything in between. And we used that to find some late summer groundhog hunting here and make it pretty fun. My heart was beating a little bit when we got close and I saw two heads pop up. I didn't think we were going to be able to get them both, but hey, I'm happy with what we got. Hope you enjoyed this little spot and stock on these groundhogs. Like and subscribe. It's just a man and nature together. See you guys on the next one.